is back, ladies and gentlemen, and so am I. I know I was starting off reviewing season two, then I dropped off the face of the earth when it came to reviewing the series. Now because I was bored, I stopped watching it because the English dub stopped coming out at that time, and then it came out later on. And then I decided to, you know, not review it, and some people were upset about it because apparently I was one of the very few people on YouTube who was actually reviewing the series. So I'm like, you know what? Even if the dub stopped being similar cast, I'm still going to review it. I'll just have to try to remember these names from watching and stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, there's just so many names in this series, and it's hard to remember, especially they're focusing on different characters in one episode. It's really hard to remember. But I will try my darnest to make sure that I continue to watch the series to the very end. Because after all, this is the final season, people. Nice, subtle, well-adapted series. <sighs> you know, Japan rarely fails us. And when they do... It can be forgivable. There are some excuses. But other than that, you just gotta give it up to Japan people. Give them a little round of applause. Without further ado, let's get into the review of Fruits Basket's final episode one. So, yes, I've been watching the last season where Hachiri reveals two true shocking revelations. One is when he hugged Toru at the park. Hunter showing that he is free from the curse. Do you know how it happened? He just know he just felt free to the point where he can't even turn into a bird when he does trans when he hugs the opposite sex like outside the family. So you know he broke the curse. It's shown you can break the curse. Question is how is a a, a a showing a feeling overcoming something? I bet it's something mentally and emotionally that you have to do in order to over, overcome this unnatural bond that they have. Now, the next one is that Akito, the representation of God of the Soma clan, is actually a female. Yeah. Well, this is for more anime-only people who were shocked to see this. Yes, Akito is a female, raised as a boy. A lot of places, they don't like having a female head of the family. So that's why they do their best to so even have the female head, have to pretty much be less feminine and do everything like a boy. That's just how it is in a lot of Eastern cultures, you know, they don't feel like women have the actual absolute power in most places. And as he continued to talk, we see further and further of the original promise. You know, the original promise where God that you have another banquet and another banquet, will they always be together? This sounds nice when people say, we'll always be together forever and and, and they have lived the, the forever thing. You know, the forever thing is not always a good thing. But sometimes people change, they fall out of love, all that stuff. To the point where, hey, I don't be around you anymore. If it's the same people, probably it might be a good thing. But if that, but if those representations of those people are showing up in that life, and they don't want nothing to do with it, you see why they want to be out of the bond. Like they are forced into this, and they don't want nothing to do with it. I can see the point in that. So forever is not always a good thing for some things. Forever sometimes sucks a lot. Now, but we see another original source of the misfortune of the Zodiacs of the Soma family. And that is because of um, Akito's mom. So apparently Akito had someone she loved. And that was um, Akito's father. But he's dead. So she felt like she had no one else to bond with. And she's pretty much kind of forced to stay in her room, not allowed to really leave the Soma residence without being noticed. And she's been a thorn in Akito's side since she was a child, and which is terrible. So she, Akito never had that feeling of a natural bond or love because of the mother. And because of that, Akito herself became corrupted in a way. So now this cycle of hatred and misfortune just keeps happening, not because of the curse itself, but also because of <clears throat> the parent not being a good mother. At the very beginning, you know, it's always it's always the, the household, the roots of the problem is always the parents most of the times when it comes to these problems. And it shows right here, you know? And I love that scene where freaking Akito just picks her up and just slams her through all them walls, man. Like, she, she Superman her mom, man. And bam, bam, bam. And finally slams her on 
to the ground. It was that was awesome. <laughs> Just seeing her slam her through all those walls. Like jeez. And then again, those Japanese walls are very well the doors are very thin and not so strong. So because of that, you can easily tear through them very easily. Now, that being said, we see the source of the problem. So even though um, if Hotter even does want to leave, he can't because he doesn't want to leave that broken child behind. They even said that the original four who were at a certain age started to cry when they woke up, crying, not knowing why and realizing the day Akito was born. Well, not born, but inside of the belly of Ren. You know, it was this mystical ritual thing, this tradition where they woke up and he went, they're here, our God is here. So they were just happy to see them, you know. They welcomed her without realizing this fortune that would someday be cast upon them. With that being said, we all know Sugar Ray, like I said, in the first season, Sugar Ray is one of the main key players. One of my personal favorites, after all. Now, she was saying, he was saying how he's using Toru as the key to lift the curse on the Soma family. But he's putting her through trials, seeing whether or not she can do it or not. And I guess he knew, he placed that there on purpose, knowing that she will someday reveal the truth of what happened and see how she can take it. Will she overcome it or not? So this was pretty much Toru's final trial, you could say. This was her final trial, made by Shigure. Everything about him is all secret. But of course, Toru was in shambles until one of my other favorite characters, Hajima, shows up. Da 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 da. <laughs> the way she did it with so no emotion to it. Like they do the super old thing, they go da da da, you know. She, she just did with no emotion at all. It's like, hey, I'm here to save the day. And she took Toru in, you know. And Toru had a final resolve, especially for um, um, Kuro chan. Um, who wanted to see um, Hotri, but couldn't. Now she understands why, what's going on, and she feels that she's, she, she falls in love with idiots. It's the reason why she likes Toro or she likes Hotri. She sees them both very similar. I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. She's the type of guy who likes that, because they, they ease her in a way, you know, they ease her compared to her complicated life that she had. So that's understandable. Then, of course, there's that saying once again where, Toro puts people before her too much to the point where it might break her one day. Where it'll be a problem she can't solve for someone and and it will just completely break her. Even if she does help solve that problem. But she sees. So she does need to learn to take some time out for herself and see what to happen. Now the last thing I guess I want to talk about it's um damn like the horse girl. Almost reading her name too. Uzaki? I think it was Uzaki. Izumi? Izumi Uzaki. I can't remember her name. The horse girl. She found, she heard, she heard everything else going on. And now she has some sort of hope now. Like, she found out, okay, there's a way to break this curse. This is something, she was the first lead she's ever gotten the entire time. Even though she had Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray knew the entire time. But he didn't know how either. He just knew that, yeah, there's a way to break it, he just don't know how. But now she heard what happened, she can now find something. This is a grasp of hope for her. But however, that whole other comes to total despair, she because she ran into Ren. It seems like Ren's about to pull some moves as well, see what she's going to use for that girl. And I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to end badly. Very badly. Well, anyways, that's, going, that's about it, man. I don't remember much, believe it or not, I don't remember much to going on towards the end of the series than I do the beginning, which is weird. You probably try to remember more of the ends, the last parts. But no, I remember more of the first half of Fruits Baskets than I do the last half. Only the very end of Fruits Baskets I truly remember, but between that, not so much. So even though I read before years ago, back in middle school, it's, it's all blurred to me. I remember bits and pieces, but that is it. Of course, there's also Fruits Bath is another, which I need to give a read and see how that's like. But that's a story for another day. So anyway, that's like after this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys are glad I'm reviewing Fruits Bath again. If you are, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. So after macro on anime, signing out.